Hello and welcome to this video on functions. Now a function is just something that takes an input, does something to that input and then spits out an output. So just to give you an example, you could just have a function which takes some kind of input, multiplies it by two and then spits out an output. That would be a function. This is known in the foundation tier GCC as a number machine, but we're going to refer to them as functions. So let's just say the input was three, then the function just multiplies it by two and it would spit out an output of six. But let's just say the input, we want to keep it as general as possible. Well, let's say the input was x, that keeps it as general as possible. Then what would the output be? Well, x times two would be two x. Now we have a notation for expressing functions like this. And the way we write it is like this. We'd say that f of x is equal to two x. Now here's what's going on. We've got, this is the input here. And then we're saying we're going to do f of x. So we're applying the function f to the input. And then that's going to output 2x. So this is our kind of output expression. Yep. And that's how we would write formally this number machine here. Let's do some more examples. Let's just say that we had plus 5. Then if the input was x, the output would be, well, x plus 5. And the way we'd write this using functional notation is f of x is that output expression. So on the right hand side, we always put the output expression in terms of x. So it's always an expression in terms of the input. So it's the input x plus five. And we can input values into here. So we could do, for example, f of two. And now x has been replaced by 2. So that means every instance of x in the output expression, we need to use 2 as the input. So we substitute x for 2. So that would be 2 plus 5, which is obviously 7. And we could do f of minus 3. So that means we're doing f of minus 3. x is minus 3, so it's going to be minus 3 plus 5. We substitute x for minus 3. So it's minus 3 plus 5, which would be 2. But what we can also do is substitute in algebraic expressions. So if I want to do f of a, for example, then we substitute every instance of x for a instead. So it's going to be a plus 5 instead of x plus 5. Right, let's do some examples. We've got f of a is equal to x squared plus 5. And we want to determine the value of f of minus 3. So f of minus 3, as I said before, we substitute every occurrence of x for whatever the input is, so minus 3. So it's going to be minus 3 squared, and notice I've used brackets there, and the reason for the brackets is I want to make sure it's all of minus 3 squared. So we're going to do minus 3 squared, and negative times a negative is positive, so it's positive 9, so it's 9 plus 5, which is 14. Now B, it says find the values of A such that f of A is equal to 21. So this is kind of the opposite of before. It's basically saying if the output was 21, what would the input A be? Well, we can sort of think about it backwards. If the output was 21, the function is doing the input squared plus 5, and that gave you 21. So if we work backwards, 21 minus 5 is 16. What squared gives you 16? Well, it could be 4 or minus 4. But let's do it properly. Well, f of A equals 21. That's our equation. We want to solve that. Well, f of A, we've got f of A is going to be, well, we substitute x for A, so it's A squared plus 5. So the left-hand side is a squared plus 5. And then we just subtract 5, so a squared is 16. And then that means that a is 4 or minus 4, because minus 4 squared is also 16. We could write plus or minus 4 using the plus or minus symbol there. What about question 2? We've got f of x is equal to 2x plus 3. Now we firstly want to determine f of 5, so f of 5, we substitute every occurrence of x for 5, so it's 2 times 5 plus 3, which is just 13. 
then we've got the second part of the question, which is f of x squared. So this is slightly different, but the principle's exactly the same. We substitute every occurrence of x for x squared, because the input is now x squared. So it's going to be 2 times x squared plus 3, because we're substituting the x for x squared, which is the input here. So it's 2 lots of x squared plus 3. Just like this is 2 lots of 5 plus 3, we've now got 2 lots of x squared plus 3. And that is the answer. It's an algebraic expression rather than a numerical answer. And then finally, we got f of x plus 1. What's that going to be? So we substitute every occurrence of x for that input there, which is x plus 1. So it's 2 times x plus 1 plus 3. So it's 2 lots of x plus 1 plus 3. And then let's just expand out and simplify. That's 2x plus 2. Sorry, that should be a plus there. Plus 3. And that is 2x plus 5. And that is the final answer. Now, this third question is quite similar to the previous harder ones we were doing. We've got f of x is equal to 2x squared minus 3x minus 9. And it wants us to find f of x plus 3 and simplify so we have it in the form something x squared plus something x. So we do what we usually do. We substitute every occurrence of x for the input, which is x plus 3. So it's going to be two lots of x plus 3 squared. We've replaced the x with x plus 3 minus 3 times x plus 3, it's going to be every occurrence of x, and then minus 9. And then we just have to expand and simplify. So we've got 2, x plus 3, x plus 3. Make sure that you write the bracket out twice. This is not x squared plus 9, so be careful about that. And then let's expand and simplify. So we've got 2 times, and I'm just going to expand into this bracket. We've got x times x. We got 3 times x, and we got another 3 times x, so that's 6x. And then we've got 3 times 3 is 9. And then we got minus 3 times x, which is minus 3x, and minus 3 times 3, which is minus 9, minus that 9 there. So that's 2x squared plus 12x plus 18 minus 3x minus 9 minus 9. If we collect like terms, well, that's the only x squared term, so that's just 2x squared. We've got 12x minus 3x, which is plus 9x. And then 18 minus 9 minus 9 is just 0, and that is the answer. And then finally, we've got this kind of graphical question. Now, I've drawn this big for you, so let's do these questions. We first want to find f of 0. Now, this is a sketch of y equals f of x. So it's possible to draw a function as a graph. And basically, we make the x values the input of the function, that the x is the input of the function, and you can see that the y is the output of the function. So the y values are the output of the function, the x values are the input. So when we say f of 0, the input is the x value. So we're saying if x was 0, we got 0, when x is 0, what is the y value on the graph? Well, the y value, when x is 0, is here. That is 1. So the y value, i.e. the output, would be 1. Next, we got f of x is equal to 0, and it wants us to solve it. There's no algebra to be done here, it's just using the graph. So it's saying, what inputs, what x values, give you an output, i.e. a y value, of 0? Well, let's look on the graph where y is 0. Where on the graph is y is 0? Well, the y value is 0 here, and the y value is 0 here. So what inputs, what x values, give you that y value of 0? Well, it's minus 2 and 2. So x is minus 2 or 2. Yep. And then finally, this is a slightly harder question, it says f of x equals k has only one solution for k. For which values of a does this occur? It's basically saying for a particular output k, there's only one solution, so one input only that would give you that particular output. So on the graph that basically says what y values, what output values, what y values is there only one input, one x value which would give you that. Well let's just say we were to take the value um, 0, a y value of 0. So if we had f of x equals 0, we already know from the previous question that has two possible inputs. 
So two possible solutions. So therefore k couldn't be zero because it wouldn't give us one solution, it would give us multiple solutions. So what outputs only have one input that could have given us that output? Well, can you see that if you had anything above one, you can see there's only a single value of x which gives each of those outputs. If you had anything below, like here for example, you can see there's multiple different inputs which would give that particular output. But if we have anything above 1 for k, we can see it's only going to have one input. So we know that k could be anything greater than 1. But also, can you see that anything down here if you had a value of k here, so your particular k was here, there's only one possible x value which gives you that output of k. We can see k is going to be anything below zero. If it was between zero and one, it would be between here and between here, and any value we pick on the line that's between those two lines, let's say here, there would be two different x values which gave you that output. Now I've got these two final test your understanding questions here and I want you to solve these. So you've got if f of x is 3x plus 5, I want you to find what is f of 2 and what is f of x plus 1. And this second harder one, if f of x is x squared plus 3x, I want you to solve the equation f of x plus 1 equals 18. So you may want to pause the video here to have a go at these. Right, let's do these. We've got f of 2. Well, as I've said before, we substitute every instance of x for 2. So it's just going to be 3 times 2 plus 5, and that's 6 plus 5, which is 11. So that's the answer. And this one here is a bit harder. We substitute every instance of x for x plus 1. So it's going to be 3 lots of x plus 1 plus 5. And if we expand and simplify, that's going to just be 3x. And then we've got 3 times 5 is 15, plus another 5 is 20. Now this harder one here, We've got f of x is x squared plus 3x, we want to solve this. Well, let's find f of x plus 1 first on the left-hand side. So we substitute every instance of x for x plus 1. So that x gets replaced with x plus 1. So we've got x plus 1 squared plus 3 times x plus 1. And that is equal to 18. Now, this is a quadratic equation which we need to solve. So I'm going to expand that. I'm just going to do that quickly for the sake of time. That would be x squared plus 2x plus 1, if you wrote that bracket out twice and expanded it. And you've got plus 3x plus 3 is equal to 18. Let's simplify. So we've got x squared plus, that's 5x. And then we've got 1 plus 3 is 4, but then we're subtracting 18, which is minus 14. And then it's a quadratic equation. We factorise it, so we need two numbers which add to give the 5 and multiply to give minus 14. Those two numbers are 7 and minus 2. So it's x plus 7 and x minus 2 equals 0. Now we've got the product of two things is equal to 0, so either that's 0. If x plus 7 is 0, then that means that x is minus 7. Or this thing is 0. If x minus 2 is 0, then x is equal to 2.